Egg freezing is part of a larger strategy of fertility preservation. There are really two main ways that you can preserve your fertility, either through egg freezing or embryo freezing. The reason to do it is based on the simple fact that we as women are born with all of the eggs that we're ever going to have. And we don't have the ability to generate new eggs and we can't repair or modify the eggs that we have. So over time, both egg quantity and quality change as we age and these changes become more drastic or rapid as we approach our mid 30s and 40s and beyond. So we know that removing the eggs from the current environment that they're in and freezing them means they're no longer subject to that degradation of numbers and quality over time. It's basically setting yourself up for success if in the future you should ever need fertility treatments like IVF to conceive and build your family. Instead of stimulating your ovaries at a later age where there's less eggs available and a higher proportion of those eggs would likely result in abnormal or, or unhealthy embryos, you could dip into the supply that you froze when you were younger and have a much more successful outcome. It's also a good idea to consider fertility preservation, egg or embryo freezing, if you know that you have to have a surgery on your ovaries, for example, having a cyst removed can sometimes diminish your ovarian reserve, and so having eggs frozen beforehand could be a good idea. Similarly, if you're undergoing treatments like chemotherapy or radiation, things that can irreversibly affect your ovarian reserve, it is a very good idea to consider fertility preservation before undergoing those treatments. Whether you're going through the process of egg freezing or embryo freezing, the first step is the exact same. It always involves a two week process of stimulating the ovaries to try to get as many eggs to mature and be successfully extracted. Typically we start this process on day two or day three of your period, or if you're someone who's been on birth control and your doctor deems that it's okay to stay on it up until you start the process, Typically, this means starting injectable medications four days after stopping the pill. You might be surprised to find out that if you have an IUD in place, it does not need to be removed before starting this process. When you come in to start, we do a baseline scan and we do blood work. This determines hormonally where you're at in your cycle. It is always ideal to start the process of stimulating the ovaries at the baseline part of your cycle, not when you're in the middle of an ovulation. So once we determine that you're ready to start, we'll tell you to start taking the medications, which are typically injectable medications that are taken for eight to 10 days, usually twice a day. These are short, thin, small caliber needles, and you're usually injecting in the lower abdomen. And there's a lot of teaching and support that is given to you. And you can also even have the help of a nurse um, to administer these medications. The medications are essentially the same hormone that your pituitary gland in your brain sends to the ovaries to stimulate one follicle or one egg to be ovulated in a given cycle. Except we're giving these medications to you at a higher level in an effort to get all of the eggs that are available that cycle to grow, mature, and be extracted. During the eight to 10 days of injections, we're bringing you in for frequent check-ins these are called monitoring visits. They're early morning visits, they're done by appointment so that you can be in and out before you start your work day. And you're coming in for blood work and an ultrasound every single time. And it's not every day. Typically it's five to six visits spread out throughout the duration of your treatment. Maybe it starts with every three days or every two days and then closer towards when you're ready for the egg retrieval, we may bring you in for a few consecutive visits. Based on what we're seeing on the ultrasound, we'll determine the point where we think we've gotten as many of the eggs to grow as possible and, and mature, and we'll make the call and say, you're going to take your last set of medications and you're ready for the egg retrieval. The egg retrieval will happen two days after that point. It is a very simple, straightforward procedure. It's the one day during the process that I advise my patients to take the entire day off, but that's mainly because of the anesthesia, which could leave you feeling groggy and tired and just wanting to rest for the rest of the day. The actual procedure itself 
involves light sedation so that you're comfortable and you don't remember or feel anything. And we're using a long thin needle through the vaginal canal to go directly into the adjacent ovary. Under ultrasound guidance, we drain each of the follicles of the fluid they contain and pick up the egg that's floating inside. And then we hand the tubes of fluid off to the embryologist and they count the eggs. You'll wake up in the recovery room shocked that the procedure's over because it's so fast and we'll let you know how many eggs we extracted. The next day, you'll receive a phone call that will let you know how many of those eggs were actually mature and able to be frozen. My goal is always that the majority of eggs we extract are mature and can be frozen. Typically, if 80 to 90% make it to freezing, I would consider that a great outcome. The technology used to freeze eggs or embryos in the embryology lab is called vitrification. This is a form of rapid cooling or flash freezing. Essentially, we plunge the cells that are to be frozen in minus 196 degrees Celsius liquid nitrogen. The rapid cooling minimizes the formation of ice crystals. And this is what we attribute to having higher success rates, better thaw survival, and higher pregnancy rates from vitrified eggs. When it comes to egg freezing or embryo freezing, it is really important to choose a clinic that is right for you and that's going to give you the best chance of success. I would emphasize going to a practice that does a large volume of cases, not just egg freezing, but they do a lot of IVF as well. And I would look at the success rates because I care not just about the first part, which is egg freezing, but knowing that you can confidently come back and use your eggs and be offered the highest possible success rates. I would also prioritize going to a clinic that is long-standing, stable, and has been around for quite some time. That's going to give you the confidence that you will likely be able to come back and use your eggs that you froze in the same IVF lab. Egg freezing is a great option for patients who are single. They do not have a partner and they wish to conceive with a partner in the future. It leaves them open to that opportunity and it offers flexibility. For patients who are in a couple and they have a partner that they know they wanna have children with one day, it could make more sense to consider embryo freezing. Embryo freezing does offer some medical advantages when you compare it to egg freezing. Not every egg survives the thaw, fertilizes, grows into an embryo. We know this happens in our bodies and this happens in our lab. There's a lot of inefficiency and attrition going from egg to live birth. So when you freeze eggs, you're freezing potential. If you turn them into embryos before you freeze them, then you can get past a lot of that attrition up front. And when you freeze embryos, you know what you have. You can also do genetic testing on embryos to get a sense of their quality, and that can increase the confidence with which you bank for the future. The two most important prognostic factors that dictate your chance of being successful are the age you were when you froze your eggs and the number of mature eggs frozen. Going through this process of stimulating and extracting eggs is not going to impact your fertility or your ovarian reserve, and it's not going to change when you go into menopause. It's a very transient process. And the reason why it doesn't impact your future fertility is because all we're doing is accessing the eggs that are available in that given cycle. Every month you recruit a small subset of your eggs to the surface of the ovaries and the rest are very deep inside and we can't get to them. We don't know how to get to them. So all we can access are the ones that are available and those are normally discarded or dissolved by your body naturally each month. So there's no way that we can dip into the supply for future cycles and we're basically salvaging the eggs that are available to begin with. So this is not something that patients should be concerned about. I'm often asked from patients considering egg freezing, what is the best age to do this? And it's not a clear and simple answer, but the earlier the better. The earlier you do this, the more eggs you're going to get for the same amount of effort, and the higher the proportion of eggs that are going to turn into normal, healthy embryos that have reproductive potential. Having said that, I wouldn't let yourself 
be discouraged if you waited till your mid 30s or later to do this process because I think any number of eggs frozen at this current age is always good to have as an option. It's always better to have that option than not having that backup plan at all.